Senate Finance Committee will come to order. Uh, thank you, members. It's April 26th. For the record, we do have a quorum. And we ho have two bills on the, on the agenda today. Members, uh, I think we're going to go ahead first with the Senate File 3510 first. Senate Th Senator Thomas Sony's higher ed bill and Senator uh, Rarick is here to represent the bill. Thank you very much, Senator Rarick, for being here. And members, um, we are pulling this out and so I had to come back to, um, to finance in order to send it by itself to the floor. And uh, that has been agreed upon as far as uh, these combination of bills and how they go. It's agreed upon by the, by the House also. So with that, um, Senator Inga Britson. Madam Chair, I move the A23 amendment. Senator Inga Britson moves the A23 amendment to so delete everything. And it puts the bill into the shape that we need um, uh, as it left the Finance Committee originally. So are there any questions? Senator Marty. Madam Chair, just for clarification, so in other words, the A23 is what was part of the, the omnibus bill that passed the other day with other big sections. So this is putting into the Senate File 3510 what, we, what this committee already passed. That's correct. Thank you, Senator Marty. Um, and before we take that vote, Senator Rarick, do you have any comments? Uh, no, thank you, Madam Chair, for uh, putting us up first. And getting okay, us out of here. <laughs> thank you. Oh, Senator Tomasoni is online. Does he want to talk? Okay. We'll just give him a moment here. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee members. I appreciate you taking the time to hear this bill. The Higher Education Committee had good hearings this session to arrive at the final product in front of you today. Thanks to Senator Eric and staff. Thank you, Senator Tomasoni. So good to hear from you this morning. And your bill will be up on the floor, Senate floor soon. Uh, with that, Senator Ingebrigtsen rene renews his motion on the A23 a23 amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed nay. Motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Senator Ingebrigtsen. Hold on one second. Senator Rarick. Madam, Madam Chair, I move that Senate File 3510 as amended be recommended to pass and be placed on general orders. On that motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those uh all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Motion prevails. The bill does pass. Thank you very much, Senator Rarick, and thank you, Senator Tomasoni. Good hearing from you. I've got to get my cadence back here. <laughs> Senator Dreheim, Senate File 3249, the Mental Health Bill. Welcome to the Finance Committee. Thank you, uh, Chair Rosen and, and members. We, we have uh, Senate file 3249 in front of us today. Um, and, and this is a combination of a lot of concepts and ideas from many uh, senators, uh, including uh, Chair Rosen, um, Senator Aki, Senator Abler, Senator Senjum, Senator Isaacson, myself, and others. Um, this uh, bill, I, I think, kind of reflects most of our attitudes towards mental health, that we should be doing more for mental health. And, and this bill offers, you know, more funding, more, more professionals, more options, more transparency, more oversight, more capacity, and, and generally just more options and more flexibility. Uh, for the people that, that work in uh, the mental health field. Uh, we, we do have a few amendments, Chair. Yes, we do. And um, we are waiting for fiscal staff to come down to and go through the, the fiscal note. But with that, maybe we'll just go ahead and get the bill in the shape that it needs to. And there is a technical amendment. Madam Chair. Senator Benson. Madam Chair, I have the A22 amendment. I've been told this is a technical amendment. Thank you, Senator Benson. Um, 
You should have that in your packet, and it is posted. Senator, any questions on that, 822? None, so Senator Benson renews her motion on the 822 amendment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Motion prevails, the amendment is adopted. Um, and then we, um, we might as well go to the other amendments, and then we can okay. get a clarification. Um, Madam Chair. Senator Benson. Uh, the A20 amendment. Senator Benson moves the A20 amendment. Senator Benson. Um, Madam Chair, this is a buy and bill injectable drug uh, for the treatment of substance use disorder and mental illness. And Senator Dreheim, I believe Senator Coran brought this amendment to you. Um, Senator, uh, yeah. We know, I know that this has been heard in the health committees, and so um, I appreciate member support. Thank you, Senator Benson. Senator Draham. Yeah, I, uh, this is a, uh, a bill that Senator Cran has worked on, and I think before that, uh, Senator Eaton had, had worked on it also. Um, there, there was a little fiscal cost um, that we feel um it should actually be a savings and, and not a cost so we're asking the agency to absorb the, the cost on how the amendment is drafted thank you senator Graham. any questions on the a22 a20 amendment okay senator benson renews her motion on the a20 amendment all those in favor say aye aye all those opposed nay motion prevails the amendment is adopted and Madam Chair, I have the A21 amendment. Senator Benson moves the A21 amendment. These are mental health grants for health care. Um, Senator Benson, I think, can we? Can you wait until we get it passed out? Please. Oh, I apologize, Thank you. yes, because I didn't get it early enough to get it in packets. Yeah, that's fine. That one is not in our packets yet, so. Um, you don't have it? Uh, Senator Benson, can you uh, withdraw your motion? They do not have copies yet for that. Oh, okay. Madam Chair, I will withdraw the A21. Okay, thank you. Senator Benson uh, withdraws the A21. I believe we'll go ahead and go to the fiscal note or to the spreadsheet. Uh, Mr. Albrecht? Or, and I would personally like to thank Mr. Albrecht mm -hmm. for his work on this bill. He, um, <laughs> you were the... You were a rock star, Mr. Albrecht, and pulled it all together because in the world of mental health and what's happening out there and what needs to happen, uh, you were able to make sense of this and pull it all together and bring it down to, a, to Senate file 3249, which is an excellent bill, and really appreciate um, all the work that you put into this. So. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate that. Um, Madam Chair and members and Senator Draheim, uh, uh, the spreadsheet um, has Senate file 3249 up in the up upper left-hand corner, um, and um, the proposals um, go by line. Excuse me, Mr. Albrecht, uh, we are having problems hearing you. You're going to have to either move a little closer or, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, okay. Um, uh, so the first proposal is additional funding for uh, the existing school-linked mental health grants of $2.4 million per year ongoing. On line number two, the next proposal is additional funding for current law shelter-linked youth mental health grants of $2 million per year ongoing. Line number three <coughs> is funding for mobile crisis grants. And what this line does is pick up um, what was a temporary increase in funding in last year's human services budget bill um, that went through half of 2024. And so that's why you can see the amount goes um, from $4 million in 2024 to $8 million in 2025. And what this line does is keep the current level, the, the fiscal year 22-23 level of funding for these grants um, at the same amount going forward. Uh, line number four um, is the Adult Mental Health, Health Initiative Grants. And this is a proposal that... Um, 
would hold harmless uh, current recipients of these grants uh, beginning in 2025, um, any mental health initiative uh, area that would have experienced a funding decrease under the DHS um, proposal to uh, create a new distribution formula for the adult mental health initiative grants. Um, going forward, nobody, none of the jurisdictions would have a reduction. Importantly, and it's not shown on, on this sheet, but it is reflected in the amendment, is that in, in the next year, in fiscal year 2026, the total for this um, line would be um, $20.5 million or so. Uh, so the amount in 2025 reflects a half a year of a distribution. Um, line five is um, a provision that doesn't have money attached to it. It is um, related to line four in the sense that um, it would require the commissioner to bring future changes to distribution formulas in grants to the legislature, um, providing the legislature an opportunity um, to change or modify uh, the proposed change. Um, but if the legislature did nothing, then the commissioner would be able to move forward with whatever it was um, they are proposing to do. Line number six is um, an appropriation to Minnesota management and budget. It is tied also to the adult mental health initiative uh, grants, which um, are currently about a $32 million a year um, um, appropriation, um, and under the new formula would be about $50 million a year. Um, so this proposal has um, MMB doing an, an inventory of the practices that the various um, areas of the state are using um, with their adult mental health initiative funds and create sort of a feedback um, mechanism for the legislature to to better understand what um, sorts of activities are being used and develop uh, knowledge for the state about whether or not they are evidence-based practices. It has a mechanism in it that identifies uh, theory-based or promising practices that are being implemented and um, and allows the Commissioner of Management and Budget to go in and evaluate those to determine whether something that seems like a good idea is actually evidence-based, and then to share that information with the other recipients so that if they choose, they could implement those practices as well. And that is $400,000 a year ongoing. Uh, line number seven <clears throat> is a uh, uh, Senator Senjem proposal um, relating to um, ERTS, which I believe is Intense Residential Treatment Services. This would provide startup grants for locked facilities um, of $2.9 million in uh, one-time funding, really, of $2.9 million in 2023, and then a small amount in 2024 that would be available through the end of 2025. A portion of line seven is eligible for FFP, and that amount is reflected on uh, line eight. For members who aren't familiar with FFP, this is federal matching money that is available in the Human Services Committee um, for most administrative funding, and a portion of that $2.9 million is administrative funding. Uh, line nine is additional funding for the Department of Health for the um, loan forgiveness, health professionals loan forgiveness program. This proposal would um, uh, set aside the $2.75 million per year um, for mental health professionals, <clears throat> excuse me, but include a, a mechanism that if, um, if not enough people showed up to to use the entire appropriation, then it would roll over into the next biennium and be available for the broader group of health professionals that receive loan forgiveness. 
Uh, line number 10 is a new uh, proposal. This is for mental health professionals payment for supervising of $2 million per year. Um, this provides an incentive to licensed professionals to work with um, uh, new graduates and new, new mental health professionals to meet um, their practice requirements by having a certain number of supervised hours, which currently some of them have to pay for, and there um, is believed to be a shortage of the supervising professionals. So this provides some incentive for those folks um, to engage in that activity. Line 11 is um, Senator Dreheim's proposal to establish um, a one to two uh, mental health urgency rooms. Um, line number 12 is a grant to for online music ex uh, instruction. That's $300,000 one time. Uh, going back to line 11, that's $4.5 million for Senator Dreheim's um, urgency rooms proposal. On line 13 is a requirement for MA managed care plans to pay at least the fee for service rate for mental health services. Those costs are um, for the administrative costs necessary to monitor the effect of a directed payment, which is what um, the proposal on line 13 uh, would be. And then line 14 is the FFP um, related to admin expenditures for DHS um, for that proposal. Line 15 would um, establish a new medical assistance service um, of, of um, residential crisis, crisis stabilization for children. That's $92,000 one time admin money. And so on line 16, there is a reduction for FFP uh, related to that proposal. Uh, line 17 is related to um, the Competency Restoration Task Force and it's picking up a portion of their recommendations, which are forensic navigators that would be um, administered by the counties and it's a $6 million per year ongoing appropriation. And on line number 18 is a proposal that would eliminate um, so it says reduce, it's actually re, um, eliminating the county share for officer-involved community-based care coordination. This is also um, known as the Yellow Line uh, project. And for the state to pick up that, that local government share would be $11,000 in, in 2023 and then $25,000 in the next biennium. 919 shows the total amounts um, for the proposals uh, in the bill. Thank you, Mr. Ulbrich. Um, Senator Durheim, any, any comments on this that you'd like to share with us? Thank you, Chair. And uh, once again, I want to thank everybody that helped with this bill. It, it was a team effort. Um, and, and there are too many people to probably even mention as senators that have worked on different areas. Um, I, I think we have a thoughtful um, list of, of improvements to our landscape in, in the mental health area, and we couldn't have done it without staff. So um, that's my two cents on it. Yes, thank you, uh, Senator Dram. And also, I'd like to thank Ms. Uh, Hoffman Litchie, too. Uh, for your work on this, uh, you guys have been. We've had we had many many meetings over this, and I do want to say the um, adult mental health initiative grants. It was uh, Senator um, Frentz and, and myself that actually brought it to the attention of Mr. Albrecht and uh, to Senator Benson um, that what the uh, DHS was doing to the counties by um, uh, creating winners and looters, losers. And uh, there was great alarm that Blue Earth County was going to be um, deducted 1.5 million for their adult mental health grants. And they were doing such an amazing job 
with uh, that program. And so that's why there is a big infusion of money on line four of the spreadsheet to make sure that all counties are held harmless, but the ones that are going to be receiving an extra amount would still receive that. Is that correct, Mr. Albrecht? Madam Chair, yes, that's correct. That's great. Okay, that's because that is um, the counties are definitely the ones that are um, the authority and that lead that have the vision for this the adult mental health um, initiative reform, and um, they're going to have the outcomes too. So that's why there is such a, a large amount of money into that program. Are there any questions for the spreadsheet? See any at this time, um, Senator Benson? Oh, Senator Graham. I'm just going to mention. I think we did get the A21. We do have the A21, right, yeah. Senator Benson? Madam Chair, if I could move the A21 amendment. Senator Benson moves the A21 amendment that was passed out. And thank you, Madam Chair and Senator Draheim. Um, if you'd like to comment, I'll give a brief description. We know that healthcare workers have been incredibly stressed through this pandemic, and we know that they are retiring in record numbers, leaving the profession. And to help retain, because it is easier to retain than retrain, uh, these grants would go to healthcare systems for the benefit of workers in the healthcare industry, short-term response to the crisis that we've been through, making sure that they are reaching out when they need help, that the systems that they work for, the nursing facilities, community health clinics, hospitals, are intentionally looking out for the mental health of healthcare workers that have carried us through this pandemic. Um, the grants are flexible. Um, to identify barriers and stigma, um, to encourage self-care, encouraging um, support. Many of them already have these resources available. But we saw with um, substance use disorder, peer-to-peer -peer outreach really did help mental, or really did help those healthcare professionals to stay on track. And so we want to be supportive. This is short-term. Um, and the allocation of the grants is the responsibility of the Department of Health, again, through those uh, facilities that they license and manage. There does need to be an evaluation returned by October of 2024. The appropriation uh, funds taken from the Office of Medical Cannabis, and before we get overly concerned about the Office of Medical Cannabis, I'd like to take the opportunity to explain when we added um, the ability to use plant material, it um, actually infused, and some of the changes we made in the last budget, infused a significant amount of money into the Office of Medical, Can medical Cannabis through special revenue. And as somebody who worked on medical cannabis from the beginning, the intention is that the department, that it would always be self-sustaining. And so we are removing the general fund appropriation because there is an abundance of special revenue now available to the Office of Medical Cannabis. Um, that $781,000 a year is then bundled to make the $2.3 million available for the mental health grants. We're only doing this for the short term in the hope that we are supportive enough that we keep professionals in our health care professions. And so, Madam Chair, I'm happy to be um, open to questions. Thank you, Senator Benson. Senator Marty. Madam Chair, just real quickly, I okay. wonder if anyone from Health Department is here who could comment. I, I, I hear what Senator Benson saying about how the medical cannabis thing has more revenue coming in from fees and so on, but I'm wondering if we have anybody who can comment on the impact of this taking away the general fund money from it. Thank you, Senator Marty. I don't believe anybody is online or in the audience that is stepping forward. Um, Senator Benson, this was Senator Klein's too, is that correct? Did you mention um, that? And Madam Chair, Senator Klein would have just taken general fund money 
um, not from the Office of Medical Cannabis, but I know we're, I'm trying to participate in protecting the bottom line <laughs> and keeping your bill in balance, keeping Senator Drayheim's bill in balance. And I had actually carried the elimination of the general fund from the Office of Medical Cannabis in the budget bill last year. We did make some changes um, to the general fund appropriation, but the special, and I apologize for not having the special revenue number available right now, but the, it, the increase was significant. Thank you, Senator Benson. Senator, uh, Mr. Albrecht, I almost called you, Senator. Do you have any comments on, on how this would affect the Office of uh, Medical Cannabis? Do you have those numbers? Um, Madam Chair and um, Senator Benson, I'm not, quite sure what the department would say. They, they might say that the general fund portion pays for things that might not, they may not think are mm -hmm. permitted or allowed or appropriate for the state government special revenue fund. Uh, my recollection of what it, the general fund money has been used for up until this point is uh, the research component um, that is, was a requirement when it was enacted. Um, but that's an essential part of the program, so mm -hmm. I don't know why that wouldn't be allowed under... Uh, and Senator Benson is right. The, <clears throat> the revenue related to the changes enacted last year was significantly greater than the additional mm -hmm. appropriations that went to administer the program. And Senator Benson. Madam Chair, the new revenue coming in was on the order of... Um, more than $10 million is my recollection over the biennium. And so it's not that this is a drop in the bucket and it's not to be disrespectful, but the Office of Medical Cannabis was always intended to operate independently off of special revenue. And now that they have new revenue coming in, I am comfortable um, making it clear that if they're going to operate independently, this is a good time to have that happen. They've now had um, access to that additional revenue for an extent for a almost a year by the time this comes into effect. And so, um, yes, the Office of Medical Cannabis Money does make this amendment more controversial than if we just take it off the bottom line. But I'm trying to be respectful of the fact that we are going to have to make some choices and I want to keep your bill, um, keep Senator Drayheim's bill at the targeted amount. Thank you, Senator Benson. Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam Chair. And to this conversation, um, I, I, I wish somebody was here from the Department of Health to help uh, answer these questions. But one indication is that, in, as I understand it, in the governor's budget, they were reducing the fees because we all know that affordability has been such an issue for people trying to um, use medical cannabis because they need it. And so um, I would just think that that would be an indicator that they believe that um, uh, we there's still more that we should be doing to help lower those costs and that uh, um, uh, it, that this is this would be in the opposite direction of that. Um, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Albrecht. Madam Chair and Senator Kent, the governor's uh, budget proposal also eliminates this general fund appropriation. Okay. 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 Any further questions on that? Senator Graham. Thank you, uh, Chair Rosen and, and uh, Senator Benson for bringing this forward. I, I support it 100 percent. I think it's the right thing to do. And, um, you know, if we need to come back next year and, and, and look at um, the cannabis budget and, and what's happening there, we definitely can. It will be a budget year. And if we need to make adjustments, we can. Okay. Thank you. Senator Benson, Thank you. then we will renew your motion on the A21 amendment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. Further amendments? Senator Marty? Um, Madam Chair, yes, I have the A27 amendment. Senator Marty moves the A27 amendment, and it looks like we do have copies, so. 
I'll let you decide whether you should talk or not, if it's complicated or... No, Madam Chair, I can explain it briefly. This is okay. the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number proposal. The House has, I believe, this in their bill. Um, it's, I believe it's eight million dollars. We, we are required to participate in the, um, the 988 um, suicide prevention hotline and this is funding to make that happen. I think this is an important project. Um, suicide is, I think, the, one of the leading causes of, of death from young people in our society, and I think we all recognize the growing mental health crisis out there as leading to greater problems, and the federal government has set up a program for this, and, and I urge our support for this. Uh, Senator Drahan. Thank you, uh, Chair Rosen and, and Senator Marty, for bringing this forward. Um, I, I don't remember us having a hearing on no, on no. this in, yeah. in committee. Um, I, I do think it's very important, and I, and I know they are migrating to this national um, number. Um, when is the deadline, or when is the uh, on date, uh, Senator Marty, for, for that number? Senator mm -hmm. Marty? Madam Chair, Senator Draham, I'm not sure exactly when the deadline requirement is for it. I, it it's something we, we're supposed to be doing. We ought to get moving on it. I, I confess I don't remember when we have to be, have accomplished it. Madam Chair? Set, uh, Senator Kent. I, I just um, was told that it's June. June of this the month, year. Yep. Senator, thank you. So my question is, uh, it's $28 million over three years. And I'm wondering where the feds are on this. <laughs> it seems like a pretty hefty price tag, too. Uh, Chair, uh, I would, I would love to take the language out without the money. So. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> But um, th th that's a, a large portion of, of what, you know, uh, what we had been given for um, kind of a budget. I think we're already over what we were originally given. Um, I, I do think it's really important, but I, I would like to know more. Um, and if it's in the, in the House version, you know, during conference committee, we can look at it, but I, I'd like to know more how that $10 million is being spent or the $8.6 million the first year and $10 million after. Um, so I, I think I'm going to have to put a, would like to put a pause on this and, um, you know, Senator Benson, can I ask you a question? Sure. I mean, Senator Benson. M Madam Chair, Senator Draham, happy to answer his question. Senator Benson. The, uh, do you remember having a hearing on this? Did we have? I don't I, remember. I don't ever. remember hearings on the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline in this year. Um, and this, I was trying to look for. I remember in last year's budget book there is a list of suicide grants. Um, I can I can tell you which page. Like <laughs> I can turn to it in my book, and so this feels out of context for me. And I'd like to know what grants we're currently getting that could be shifted to this, because I know we fund 16 suicide prevention centers around the state, and how does this fit into that? And we already have a hotline. How does this fit into that? And so, yes, this is important work. I'm not as aware of the federal deadline as Senator Marty is. Um, so I'd like the opportunity to look at some of those funds and see what has been considered. I'm sure this will come up in conference committee. And if there are federal matching funds we need to draw down, we can figure out how to do that. Thank you, Senator Benson. Uh, Mr. Nauman, could you please um, give us a little more detail on the three-year number of, did you say, $28 million? Madam Chair and members, <clears throat> the language of the amendment in Section 33 is added to the bill on line 2.23 of the amendment. It appropriates 8.671 million from the general fund to the commissioner of health. And then sets the base in fiscal years 24 and 25 at 
zero one nine million each year. So the sum of those <coughs> three those numbers over three years is twenty eight point seven oh nine. Thank you, Mr. Newman. And uh, I am um, very curious about um, the other sixteen suicide um, sites. That Senator Benson, do you? Have any further details on that? Um, uh, what we have done in in your jurisdiction in the past, um, and and there have been small amounts to funding hotlines. Um, there was a private entity that had been supported for years, um, and there is you know, overall objective goals. The prevention plan is due to be updated here in 2023. Um, so we have mobile crisis services in each county around the state. How does that coordinate with this? How does the existing national suicide hotline and the Minnesota support for that incorporate into this? So is this just the federal money or is this just money to support this 988 service and its setup? I'm trying to look at the governor's supplemental budget proposal and understand that um, so it's supposed to enhance existing suicide lifeline program and add additional responsibilities again without a hearing I don't know what that meshing looks like how they would then refer to the county sites that are supposed to be available for support um, this looks like it's competitive grants, and so I would like to see what the language is around that competitive grant proposal. Um, I know existing, we do have native tribes that have their own response lines. How does this mesh with tribal suicide response? So I have laudable goal. I don't know what happens to the rest of the money, how that's all coordinated and pulled in. And, and with respect to the department and the governor's budget proposal, my years on health and human services, they usually say, hey, we need a whole new program, let's fully fund it without saying these are existing resources, let's blend them in to achieve this very good goal. And so I'd like the opportunity to look at what other resources are gonna be pulled in so that we can streamline. Because if we're gonna go 988 and then spread those referrals out into an existing system, I'm not sure why we'd need $10 million to do that. Thank you, Senator Benson. Remember the conversation about the big, whites, big white board? The big white board. The big mm -hmm. white board. Where, where's the funding right now? What is, what is appropriate? And who else is funding it? And can we collaborate? So, yeah. Senator Ken. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, to the point that there, this was not given a hearing, and this has been seen um, uh, in jurisdictions across our work. Um, this was in the governor's bill that did not get a hearing, a lot, like other governor's bills that did not get a hearing. So we could have had this conversation, but um, the choices were made to not give hearings to the governor's proposals. I don't think this was even uh, an amendment in committee. Senator Marty. Thank you, Madam Chair, and yeah, I wanted to follow up also, in terms of this is what the, what the administration felt was appropriate to fit in with the existing programs, to tie them in. This is, not, this is not a whole new thing. This is to try and coordinate what we've got now and blend that in and take funding we have now. And this was the governor's, the administration's assessment of what the need was in addition to what we're already putting in. And again, saying, well, it would be good to have hearings on this. That's what I think we're saying. It would be good to have hearings on this. When a governor puts together a bill like this, it's appropriate that the committee hear the bill. And so saying, well, we didn't hear the bill, so we can't do anything with it. Um, I'm glad everybody thinks it's a laudable goal. It just would be helpful if we would have the discussion in committee. And, and I understand that this, you're saying this isn't the time for it, but that's what the administration put together based on the existing system and what the needs are and saying that, well, we don't know what the needs are and how it fits together because we didn't have a hearing. You're pointing the finger at yourself for not having the hearing then. Senator Rosen. Senator Draham. Uh, you know, just to, to the couple points there that, uh, you know, in, in my committee that I chair, I, I did have the governor's budget and we did have robust discussion. Um, 
I, I know every committee's plate is a little different, and um, they have uh, some committees have extra time and, and some don't. I so that on, on that subject, but I, I but I do think this provision is different than the governor's provision because I think he paid for it differently. Um, so I think overall we need to unpack the 16 other <laughs> groups that we're funding and see how that interacts with this. I, I would be happy to work on it. Um, I, I, I think it's important, but $28 million and for a phone number uh, seems excessive when we've already had uh, a, a toll-free number. Um, why would cost that much to do it? So I, I, I'm going to have to oppose this as drafted and, and be willing to keep on digging into it. Um, but it, it, there's just too many holes for, for me mm -hmm. right now. Um, so I, I, don't, I think and Senator Benson had her hand up also. Uh, thank you, Madam Senator Chair. Dermot, Senator Benson. This was actually funded by a telecom surcharge in the governor's budget. It was not a general fund okay. appropriation. Okay. And so I think that's a, an additional um, reason this needs, I, I, and I don't know why the telco um, charge wasn't drafted into this amendment, so perhaps Senator Marty could help me understand that. Sure. Senator Marty? Sure, Madam Chair, I believe the House chose to appropriate the money this way. The governor had proposed a, a telephone surcharge for the system, which is how we have funded a lot of yes. previous things like suicide prevention and 911 and other types of phone related things, but um, my feeling is those surcharges are not the best way to fund programs that are public responsibilities. We ought to fund them out of our budget. And that's why this proposal would go the route that the House actually went rather than the governor. But the, the amounts of the funding and the direction for the funding was from the governor's budget. Um, no, the, the source of the revenue is the same as what the House would have picked, not what the governor picked, because I just that was my decision. I think it's a fair way to fund programs. Senator Marty, I, I did um, believe this This is the first time I've seen this, and I carried the bill through to both um, uh, Human Services Committees, and I've not seen this amendment presented in either one of those committees. Senator Dreheim. Um, I, I just received a text from a friend that said we did have both the MDH and the DHS budget presentations mm -hmm. in committee and the specifics for this were not in those budget proposals okay. that we went through. Okay. So it wasn't in timely fashion that this proposal came out and that's why it was missed in the hearing because um, there's just a lot to unpack, Chair. So I, I, right. I would like to put this on hold and um, you know look into it further because I, I do think the transition to a, a simple number like that um, nationwide is the path that we need to go on. I just don't, I'm not sure on how we're doing it here. Thank you, Senator Graham. Senator Marty, you would like to renew your motion? Okay, Senator uh, Marty renews his motion on the 827 amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay? No. 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 The motion does not prevail. The 827 is not adopted. Further amendments? Senator Kent. First, I'd like to ask a question, um, if I could, of Senator Dreheim. Um, forgive me while I'm juggling. When I was looking at this, when we were going through the spreadsheet, um, something that we've talked a lot about in this committee has been um, mental health for our kids um, and recognizing that kids are struggling across our state. Um, at all ages, uh, and, and a lot of that has obviously been connected to the disruptions in their lives and their education and their families um, brought on by the pandemic. And as I was looking at the spreadsheet, I just want to confirm and make sure I'm seeing what in this bill is being added, um, addressed, what is being uh, um, identified to address youth mental health. So. I, I see the school link mental health grants, the shelter link youth mental health grants. Um, there's the uh, MA service residential crisis stabilization, and then also the urgency rooms, as I understand it, are targeted for people under the age of 25. Is that correct? 
Thank you, Senator Kent. Senator Durham. Yes, and the urgency rooms is something that they, we worked with Senator Isaacson on. So, uh, um, thank you, Madam Chair. So my question really is, in this time when we know how many of our kids are struggling, we know that personally for them and their families, that is huge. Um, it has lasting effects if it's not addressed. Um, it has effects in our schools because we don't have enough uh, mental health professionals in our schools. We didn't, we were dead last before there was a pandemic. Um, in the entire country in terms of providing that type of support for our kids. And now that those chickens are really coming home to roost for our kids and our schools and, our, and their families. Our teachers are struggling because when kids have mental health challenges, they don't walk up to you and say, hey, I'm feeling a little depressed right now or my anxiety is kicking up. They, it's behavioral. And um, teachers are struggling because there aren't professionals in the schools to help address the problems and to alleviate that responsibility off the shoulders of the teachers who are struggling just to deal with the learning challenges that have come about in the past couple of years. So this is, a, this is one of those pebbles that has just massive ripple effects to so many aspects of our whole society. Um, and I would add then probably that, you know, and I know this for a fact because I have constituents for whom this is the case, that they're, because their kids are struggling, they have had to make job changes. They can't have the jobs they used to have because they have to be available when their kid has a crisis to run over to school and pick them up. This is real. So in that spirit, and I appreciate the effort that is here, but we have seen this a lot um, at a time when we have a very significant surplus and we have a historic crisis on our hands and one that will last for a long time if we don't address it. Um, while these are good programs and I support these programs, they just don't, they don't meet the moment. They don't meet the challenge that our kids are facing. And so, um, Madam Chair, I would like to move the A24 amendment, please. Senator Kent moves the A24 amendment. And we do have copies, and it will be posted. Yep. Whenever. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I'll go ahead and start describing it. Um, Thank you. Madam Chair, this, and members, this is, um, this is a package of initiatives to support um, mental health in our schools. Um, the first would be, first component is the school support personnel, as we've discussed in the education setting, um, that, uh, as I said, and the school support personnel is defined in statute as school psychologists, school, school social workers, school counselors, and nurses, and also chemical dependency counselors. Um, and schools have flexibility on how they do that, but because our, we haven't kept up with inflation and funding in our general formula, and because of the strains on our schools, because of the uh, special education and English learner cross subsidy, they don't have the resources. And, um, and, and we know this is gonna be a problem because we know there are gonna be layoff notices going out um, to all our schools. Uh, and when, when that happens, schools try to protect class size. And so the, the, these are the types of professionals that are usually the first to be laid off. So this is just going to exacerbate the problem. So this amendment would address sh these shortages by providing an additional 1,100 student mental health professionals. And as we've discussed in this committee, um, there are a lot of student support services personnel in this state who are not employed, or they are working in Iowa, or they are working in Wisconsin or the Dakotas. Um, so we can, uh, we can definitely hire a bunch of people. Um, an estimated 42,000 kids in Minnesota have major depression and do not receive treatment. Uh, and if we want to strengthen students' social, emotional, academic, and physical health, we need to address this problem and make sure students can access the support they need. 
The second component here is statewide school-based mental health screening, which would support um, statewide implementation of mental health screening and referral systems by school-based mental health staff, including school administrators, to improve the mental health and well-being of Minnesota students and staff. And it would, this, this, these funds would be provided to school districts, charter schools, and tribal schools through a per-pupil allocation based on K-12 enrollment count for the mental health screening of students and school staff well-being self-assessments along with necessary resources and supplies. And to the point that um, of Senator Benson's earlier amendment about mental health support for health care professionals who are, we need, to, it is much easier to retain than to recruit and, and bring on board new people. The exact same situation is happening within our educational staff. Um, the third component is infant and early childhood mental health consultation in schools, um, and it would create an early childhood mental health system of care to meet the needs of state's children by integrating services with local schools and early childhood programs that serve young children and their families. This work already takes place in child care programs with federal funding and has long been demonstrated as a need for schools, and we know that through ECFE and our school districts, we are doing a lot of screening and assessments of our young kids, and this would be an important important addition there. And the fourth and final component is um, early childhood social workers. Uh, this amendment would provide funding for social workers focused solely on early childhood systems like early intervention, Head Start, Early Head Start. Strengthening these programs will help improve outcomes for participating children and families. And I know um, Mr. Nauman will uh, share the details of the numbers for us, um, and this is a hefty price tag. But we do have these funds. We do have this crisis, and it is incumbent on us to step up and support our kids in every way we possibly can. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Kent. Mr. Nelman. Madam Chair and Senator Kent, thank you. Um, this, this amendment has a collection of about five separate appropriations, all mostly in the K-12 area. Um, the total in fiscal 23 is 38 million a little bit more than 38 million. In fiscal 24, it's 42.6, and in 25, 43.9. So the total over the three years is $124.5 million of increase, all from the general fund. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Nauman. Senator Benson. Um, Madam Chair, thank you. Senator Kent, do you know where we rank in per pupil funding? An exact number. Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam Chair. An exact number I don't know. It, traditionally, it's kind of in the middle of the pack of the country. But we rank dead last in our expenditures for student mental health and counseling mm -hmm. services. Madam Chair. Senator Benson. Um, we're either 17th or 20th. So we're either like top third or about that. So what, Madam Chair, Senator Kent, why do you think schools are not spending money on counselors when states with much lower funding have higher counseling ratios? We have above, you know, we're in the top third in funding per pupil, bottom for counselors, but states that are in the bottom half for funding have higher counseling ratios. Yes, Senator Kim. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, other states mandate those ratios. So, Senator and so, Madam, Madam Chair, Chair, if I can finish, if yeah, I sure. can just finish um, to answer Senator Benson's questions, other states mandate to the school districts how many of these professionals they have to have in their in their schools, and Minnesota has made the decision not to do that. And I appreciate that we don't want unfunded mandates. Um, although we have them, we have them through special education, and we have them through English learning, um, and as and and we do not keep up with inflation. Over and I've got a really good hot off the presses document that will sh that shows the, the that case that since we made some significant changes in education funding about 20 years ago, uh, that over that time we have significantly lost ground on our general formula, which is as we all know what our school districts really rely on to fund everything. And so with the added pressures of having to um, just do the basics of education and the other things that they have to do to support students, aspects of different aspects of their learnings and those mandates, uh, where are they gonna do, how are they gonna do it? The only way they can do it is to raise levies in their local communities, which is already driving up property taxes 
This keeps happening. It's further creating disparities among our school districts. It happens in my very neighborhood because I live at the border of three separate school districts and I see the difference in literally taking my dog for a walk. I see the difference. These are the decisions we have made about education and as I have said in this committee, it is disgraceful in 2018 where we stood in terms of student support services. It is a crisis and unconscionable to let that stand when we have a $9.3 billion surplus. We owe it to our kids. And I think about the people in my community and the struggles that they are having and that their kids are having, and we need to do much better. I am so glad, so glad, Madam Chair and Senator Drayheim, for the work that you are doing in this area. It is so badly needed. It is needed in our schools, it is needed in our families, it is needed in our communities, it is needed in our corrections and public safety system. But this doesn't go far enough and we have an opportunity to make a real difference and I hope that by the time we get out of here in four weeks that we can. And Thank Madam you, Senator Kent. Senator Benson. Um, I, I wish the people in our schools who were concerned about kids' mental health had done more to get our elementary kids back in their classrooms so that the depression and anxiety and the record number of pediatric mental health cases maybe wouldn't have happened um, at this level. And so our school districts can ask for fewer mandates, but we are, and, and as the public is listening, we are in the top 20 for funding of our schools. And if we are last in counselors, Let's figure out what relief our students need, our school boards need. If there are other mandates that need to be released so that they can choose to spend money on counselors, then let's talk about that. But right now, our schools are struggling in a lot of ways. But Senator Dreheim has school-linked mental health so that professionals can be accessed. Senator Dreheim is carrying pediatric mental health beds. We've got urgency units so that our schools don't have to solve every single health problem. Um, they can be a resource for our kids and help them get what they need through the school-linked mental health grants so that parents can feel supported. So Senator Dreheim has done a really good job of looking at the needs of families we have children's adding mental health beds. We have, a, look at the list of things that Senator Dreheim has in this bill. School-linked mental health, shelter-linked mental health, mobile crisis grants, the urgency rooms. We are doing forward-thinking support for children with mental health. Um, we've got a uh, MA service residential crisis stabilization grant for children. I mean, Senator Drayheim, you have done an amazing job at looking at the needs of kids in this state in the middle of the biggest mental health crisis we have seen. And I want to thank you for that leadership. Thank you, Senator Benson. Senator Drayheim. Thank you, uh, Senator Benson and, and Chair Rosen and Senator Kent uh, for bringing this forward. Um, I, I do think we need to do more. I, I, I don't think there's anybody here that would disagree with that. Um, part of my motivation was the disappointment in what we have done in the past. Um, so we, we are moving in that direction um, with this bill. Do I wish we could do more? Of course I do. Um, but if this is adopted onto this bill, it kills the bill. And you know, when I, when I search mental health and our bill search, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bills from all of us trying to work on mental health. And with help from Senator Rosen, Senator Senjum staff, and a whole bunch of other people on both sides of the aisle, we kind of came up with a list that we thought we could be the most impactful this year. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't disagree that we need to do more. I do. I, I do not have the resources to, to do more. Um, and I don't know where we fund this. And, and I would 
want to unpack this a little bit more. I almost think we need a committee on just mental health. Um, so as we move forward for the next biennium, and we're going to talk about budgets um, and, and the health and human service and HSR sector is so large, um, you know, maybe that is a, a, a short two-year committee that we can really start to work on on these good, important, tough issues. Uh, that cross many jurisdictions in our committee structure. Um, I do not serve on the K-12 <coughs> committee. I have not served on that, so I'm a little out of my, my background on that. Um, but, you know, for now, I think, once again, I'd, I'd like to put this on hold. Um, I, I appreciate you bringing it forward. I, I don't think, um, you know, that we do enough for our kids, but I think our bill is a step in the right direction. I, I think it's thoughtful and it tax a bunch of different uh, avenues. You know, what I hear from professionals, and, and my dad was one of those professionals, um, there's not enough professionals out there. Mm -hmm. So part of our attack in this bill is to try to balance some of the expansion that we want to do with bringing more professionals into the state and, and training more people to work in our schools and to work in our counties. Um, so I, I, th I think you need to have a, a mix and a blend, and I think that's what we tried to do with this bill. So for now, members, I'm, I'm going to have to be a, a no on the Kent Amendment. I appreciate it being forward, but we'll have to uh, continue to work on it. Thank you, Senator Draham. And I, um, I do know that in the House it was heard and it was laid over. I do want to just make a couple comments because I have uh, been inve invested uh, for a very long time in the mental health discussion. A lot of the pieces that are on this spreadsheet are I was chief author of uh, many years ago. And, okay, going down memory lane again. Uh, 20 years ago, sitting on um, Senator Berglund's committee, you would not mention mental health. We funded it, but we would never talk openly about mental health and these issues. So I always like to bring everybody back to where we, where I started or where mental health was years ago and where we are now. And I totally agree with you, Senator Derryham. There should be a single, single focus on this issue. But when you look at the a school mental health grants, and again, I was chief author on that and the shelter linked, um, those those are tremendous. I mean, kids move, as you said, Senator Kent, to different, diff different districts to receive that care. But as you said, Senator Draham, there are not enough professionals out there. So we expanded to use tel uh, telehealth in school linked, and that has worked amazing. And the 15 school districts that I'm honored to serve, that is what they are doing. And it's, but we, we need more resources. We need to expand it even farther. So that is a tool that still is, um, in the school jurisdiction, they have control over that. They know these kids. They know who, who is is struggling. Uh, I don't necessarily think that we need to have a screening um, for all kids when they come in. That might be, might, I don't know how the parents would feel about that. And I, I feel that it's still a very intimate discussion between the parents and the, um, the, the students. The uh, shelter-linked youth mental health grants, that has been, uh, again, I was chief author of that. That has been an amazing program for our homeless youth, and it is, um, it is, it is making a difference. We just got a, a report on that, and it is working. So one of the, the, the great programs that we initiated in this, in this body here um, is, is working very, very well. So um, Senator Draheim, I do agree with you that these are issues, Senator Kent, that are really important. They just again, need to be impacted, make sure that we can execute. Uh, but for right now, what we have in this package before you is a really good start. And it is utilizing all the resources and, address and, and, and pinpointing all the areas that need to be addressed. Madam, Madam Chair, can I do a, just say a quick follow-up? Sure. Thank you. Um, going back to what Senator Benson said and Senator Dreheim, I agree. I think you've done a very good job with the resources that were made available. Um, and 
yes, the, the student support personnel shouldn't necessarily be in this bill, although this is sort of a mental health omnibus bill, so it makes sense. This should be, as I have been fighting for 10 years in the uh, E-12 bill. We did it um, about seven years ago, but then haven't got a hearing since. Um, and we only had $30 million for all of education uh, this year with this surplus. So this is not to say that you didn't do a very good job balancing a lot of needs in this bill. I agree. The problem is the choices that the Senate majority is making in terms of overall asset resource allocation. And um, when we have so many people, and particularly our kids in crisis, I think we're making the wrong choices to not dedicate more resources to these types of programs. Thank you, Senator Kent. Senator Marty. Thank you, Madam Chair. First, I want to ask for a roll call on this. I think it's roll that call important. Roll call requested. Roll call granted. Um, and in terms of scope, I mean, I, I very much agree with what several of the previous members have said. Um, they're putting in, in this bill $2.4 million a year, I believe, roughly speaking, for the school-related mental health needs. Senator Kent's amendment proposes over $40 million. I mean, it's a different ballpark, and there's a reason for that. Senator Benson, I think she just called this the greatest mental health crisis we've had. And we're all saying we agree, we agree, we agree. And so this bill, while it's a good bill, it's, it's maybe akin to trying to use a garden hose to put out a five-alarm blaze. I mean, it's a huge problem, and we'll put a little bit here and say it's really good stuff, and it is good stuff. I don't think there's anything in the bill I'm, I'm opposed to. I think there's good things in here, but the crisis our kids are facing, and it's not just kids, but in this case the kids, um, 40 million a year is a good shot at making a difference. I'd say two and a half million is, it's better than nothing. But like a garden hose in the big fire, you know, it's not a big contribution. So I, I think that what Senator Kent is proposing is a huge step forward, and I think it's something we ought to be doing, and I urge your support. Thank you, Senator Murray. Okay, for the comments, uh, Senator Kent renews her motion on the A24 amendment. Roll call requested. Ms. Johnson? Chair Rosen? Chair votes no. Vice Chair Ingebrigtsen? Uh, Senator Marty? Aye. Senator Benson? No. Senator Champion? Aye. Senator Johnson? No. Senator Kent? Aye. Senator Kiffmeyer? No. Senator Lopez Franzen? Aye. Senator Pratt? No. Senator Ingebrigtsen? being four ayes and five noes, the motion does not prove. Further amendments? Senator Marty. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have the A23 amendment. Senator Part Marty moves the A23 amendment. We have copies, and it will be posted. When you're ready, Senator Marty. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. This, this one appropriates um, Ten million dollars for inpatient psychiatric um, um, and psychiatric residential treatment facilities, the PRTF, I guess they've been being called. And this is one that would be startup grants for these facilities. We have, I think, there is universal agreement that we have a shortage of of inpatient um, treatment beds for children and kids, and we have so many people left around. Um, waiting for emergency rooms. Senator Dreheim and Senator Isaacson put together a proposal to try and help, which is a good thing. It's a good provision. But we have to, we basically need to build off of that and make sure that kids have the treatment options available. And this would be a, a sizable step forward to make sure that we have these facilities available for kids. And I urge your support and um, ask for a roll call. Roll, <clears throat> roll call requested, roll call granted. Senator Graham. Thank you, uh, Chair Rosen and Senator Marty for bringing this forward. Um, you know, I, I, I think we are trying to do this. There, there are some other groups that are, are um, working on 
increase in capacity uh, for kids. Um, you know, I, I think with the removal of the um, hospital bed or the moratorium on that will help people get more creative um, in our healthcare industry throughout the state. Um, so I, I think this bill, we're on the right direction. Uh, but but for now, I would I would uh, not support this amendment. Thank you, Senator Graham. Any further comments? Okay. Senator Marty renews this motion on the A23 amendment. Uh, Ms. Johnson, please take the roll. Chair Rosen. Chair votes no. Vice Chair Ingebrigtsen. Senator Marty. Aye. Senator Benson. No. Senator Champion. Aye. Senator Johnson? No. Senator Kent? Aye. Senator Kiffmeyer? No. Senator Lopez Franzen? Aye. Senator Pratt? No. And Vice Chair Ingebrigtsen? There being four ayes and five noes, the motion does not prevail. Further amendments? It's okay. Take your time, Senator Ken. <laughs> See you scrambling. No, Senator Marty. Senator Marty moves the A28 amendment. We do have copies, and it will be posted. Change, Senator Marty. Madam Chair, this <laughs> one is a A28 amendment is a big financial request. Two hundred million dollars for addressing mental health needs in the criminal justice system, and as you and I have discussed, both serving on the governor's justice reinvestment initiative, um, and when we were talking about people under court supervision for their for because of their behavior. And many cases, not all, but in many, many cases, we have people who are struggling with mental health and co-occurring co disorders who are not being treated. And I think um, I remember explicitly one of the, uh, I believe it was a county commissioner from Roseau County who was on the task force talking about how, how if somebody that they're supervising, an offender who's committed, who's broken the law, who's in trouble with the law, and they're talking about how we were talking about how we can make sure we have a better job, do a better job so they don't reoffend. And he was saying, you know, if we, if we're doing the best job we can of supervision, they need mental health and the, and there's no program they can get into, they're going to fail. They are going to fail. They are going to commit crimes. They are going to end up in the system again. And this is one I was extremely frustrated by, the, everybody saying this is a problem and that if we address this, it could be a game changer in public safety and making our streets safer. We ought to do it. And the general thought is, you know, we could study it more and study it more and someday we might do something about it. Well, Senator Dreheim and Madam Chair, this is, this is the year where we actually have some money in the budget. And I know it's not, I've heard this about 20 times or 100 times, it, it's not a budget year, but we're, the Senate is appropriating money left and right, and um, when you count all the bills that have gone to the floor, I think it's, it's 13, 14 billion dollars now. And we're saying we're not, we don't have 200 million to address the needs of people in the court system. Um, you know, yesterday's bill was supposed to be doing something to make our streets safer. This would make, we know this would make a difference. Everybody, not just the mental health providers, but the prosecutors, the, the court system, the probation officers, everybody is saying this would make our community safer. And so this is a simple but bold attempt to try and say, let's, let's commit to making our streets safer. 
and we can do it, and we have the money that we can put it in place to make this happen, and so I'm urging your support and ask for roll call if I didn't. Roll call requested, roll call granted. Uh, Senator Draham, and then I'll make some comments afterwards. Thank you, Chair, and, and uh, Senator Marty for bringing this forward. I, you know, I, I'm just going to have to be a, a no again on this. I, I, I don't know enough about it. I, I, one time funding of that type of dollar amount without more, more information uh, would be hard for me to support. I, I do agree that there is more we should be doing for the people that are in, um, in, in our prisons and jails throughout the state, but I, uh, um, I'm just gonna have to be a no right now. Thank you. Thank you, um, Senator Dreheim. Mr. Nauman. So Madam Chair, and maybe a question for Senator Marty. <clears throat> As I begin, I've heard it referenced that this was intended to be one time. That's not what the language says. It, it is ongoing. Madam so Chair. So that would be a $600 million. Madam Chair, Mr. Nauman, it was intended Senator to be Marty. ongoing. Okay, so Madam Chair and Senator Marty, um, Senator Draham, this is an ongoing price of $200 million a year, so the total over three years will be $600 million. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nauman. It sounds like you are going to live, too, because we need you in the next month. So you can't, we're, we're getting better. You're getting better. Okay. Um, I just I just like to say that, really, that's the counties that are our mo local mental health authority, and there are programs out there, and a little plug for um, the Yellow Line Project, which uh, many of you on HHS know that project, where the counties are, are, t are um, screening for the mental health before they go into jail. They are making sure that they are receiving the services and what kind of services they need before they are incarcerated. These are the projects, these are the areas that we need to support and that's why this, the adult mental health initiative grants is so critical to our counties across the border in the metro and rural all over the place. It equalizes everybody and allows them to do projects like that that um, provide the services to these people that obviously need them. I think 200 million is um, a complete overreach, but I'm not negating at all or minimizing the fact that these, there needs to be some focus on, on um, delivery system of, of, um, to these folks that are desperately needed and the adult mental health initiative grants are going to do that. So um, let's allow the counties to, to, to provide those services. Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I had made reference to the public safety aspect of this uh, in my previous amendment, and this gets right to that point. I know certainly from my own experience, um, uh, for example, visiting the Ramsey County Workhouse and talking to the corrections officers there and uh, talking to Washington County Sheriff and talking to and doing trainings with the Woodbury Police Department and Maplewood. Um, over and over and over again, what I hear they deal with is mental health, substance abuse, and domestic violence. Those are, you own a ride along, that's the majority of what you run across. And um, on a given day, and I know there are higher profile things that, the crimes that are happening that we need to deal with and pay attention to as well, but if you talk to the folks who are on the front lines of this, this is what they're dealing with. And you know, you reach a moment where you say, why aren't we getting ahead of this, getting upstream of this, dealing with mental health, which is obviously closely linked to substance abuse um, and domestic assault. There are so many things. And then perhaps we don't have so many people in our correction system, which is a very, in very inefficient and expensive way to deal with people who really have a mental health issue that has brought them into the criminal justice system. Um, so again, we have an opportunity here to make some real changes that would change lives and ultimately, I believe, save us money. Um, but it's about the choices we make and the priorities we have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Kent. And again, um, on those comments, I will go back to the Adult Mental Health Initiative grants. Mm -hmm. At the local level, as you mentioned, that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. They are ecstatic. They are ecstatic about line four on the spreadsheet. And I think that's where we're giving them the tools and allowing them to, to provide those services, whether it's SUD or mental health. 
Senator Marty renews his motion on the A28 amendment. Um, the clerk will take, uh, Ms. Johnson will take the roll. Oh, I'm sorry, Senator Marty, did you have Madam Chair, I was just going to close saying quickly, yes, it would be, yes, it is a huge amount of money, and yes, as Senator Kent mentioned, it actually may save money over time. It would certainly make our community safer, and I agree, the Yellow Line Project, all the county folks doing this, this is what they need, and the bill, as I said, has got good stuff in there for it, but it's a drop in the bucket. It's the garden hose for the fire, the house fire. It's a huge huge problem and we're trying to say we want to do something about public safety but well this is too much you know if somebody said okay we only need 180 instead of 200 well hey I'd be welcome to that discussion but we're not even in the ballpark and so I, I urge the majority to rethink its position on this because this would make our community safer I well, argue Okay, whatever. The Senator, Senator Marty renews his motion on the A20, uh, A28 amendment. Ms. Johnson. Chair Rosen. Chair votes no. Vice Chair Inga Britson. Senator Marty. Marty votes aye. Senator Benson. No. Senator Champion. Aye. Senator Johnson. No. Senator Kent. Aye. Senator Kiffmeyer. No. Senator Lopez Franzen. Aye. Senator Pratt? No. And Vice Chair Inga Britson. There being four ayes and five, five noes, the A26, the A28 is not adopted. Sorry. Further amendments? Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to offer the A26 amendment. Senator Kent moves the A26 amendment. We, looks like we do have copies, Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we've talked a lot about the challenges of workforce in dealing with mental health. And when I served on the Higher Education Committee in my very first term, if we're going to do memory lane, in 2013 through 16 sessions, um, we spent a lot of time uh, focusing on that challenge, uh, particularly an issue in greater Minnesota, um, but everywhere. Um, and we did at that time um, put a fair amount of resources and um, tuition help and um, uh, loan forgiveness to um, really incentivize people to follow this path and to, to, to go through their education and be prepared to, to serve in this badly needed area. So the A26 amendment um, gets into this very issue. Uh, it allocates money through an existing DHS grant program to hire more mental health and substance use disorder providers from communities of color or indigenous communities. It also establishes a grant program to recruit and retain mental health providers in rural and underserved areas who serve patient, patients on public health insurance. Um, as we've discussed, Minnesota is facing crisis level workforce shortages in mental health and substance use dis, uh, treatment. And with a rising level of mental health needs in the state, we do not have enough providers to keep up, as we have all acknowledged, especially for patients in rural or underserved communities. And so, members, I would encourage us to support the A26 amendment and make a difference, in, a significant and meaningful difference in this important area. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Kent. Mr. Nauman. Madam Chair and members, there are two separate appropriations in this proposed amendment, uh, both from the general fund and each for $10 million. These are ongoing appropriations, so the total price tag would be $60 million over the three years of the projection period. Senator Draham. Thank you, uh, Chair Rosen and Senator Kent, for bringing this forward. Um, you know, and, and I think we have talked a little bit about this, about the need for more professionals. And, and I do think uh, the provisions that we have in here that are very similar, if not modeled after parts of, of this bill, um, are trying to address that issue. So I think, I think we have provisions in this bill to go after more recruitment, more training. Uh, the uh, supervision piece while paying for, for that to hopefully get people through licensure. Um, is an important piece that's been missing. Um, so I, I think we address a lot of the concerns in this bill, in, in our current bill structure. 
Um, so I, I'm going to be a no on this, but I, I appreciate it coming forward. And, and we did try to address some of the concerns in here. And I think literally took some language out of here and put in here. So thank you for bringing it forward. Thank you, Senator Champion. Senator Champion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Draheim, I have one question, and I'm sorry that I'll have to step out for a brief moment because uh, I'm, I'm supportive of the A26, but, but my question uh, around your comments around that you think that what's in the bill is appropriate. In Section 22, does it provide for uh, supervision and, and uh, paid internships for undergraduate individuals? Senator Draheim. Thank you, Chair. And, and Senator, for the question, I, I do not believe it does. Madam Senator Chair. Champion? Um, Senator Draheim, and I hope that even with some amendment to the A26, I would hope that you would do something about that, it, because if individuals are very serious about it, and if they're also serious about uh, um, uh, kids of color also participating, not having any paid internships uh, on, on the undergraduate level really sort of creates and enlarge disparity. Um, here's what I mean by that. I was talking to a very well-known uh, mental health, you know, uh, organization. My son is really interested in being a therapist, so this is the first time I was trying to get, uh, encourage him to be a lawyer, but he says he wants to be a therapist, and I said, okay. Uh, but he's, he's an undergraduate student, uh, and he's finished his third year in, in Colorado. But when he went for internship, they, they wanted him to do it unpaid. Now, it's usually a time when you're supposed to come here, um, uh, be engaged, and being a person of color where we want to en enlarge that, it just creates an opportunity where he will probably still be able to do something, but just think of the number of others who can't. And so your language does not specifically speak to this, and so I would think that um, the A26, especially with, with that slight amendment, should be adopted. But to that point, Senator Draheim, before I have to run out, Thank you for the question. Senator Draham. Thank you, Chair Rosen uh, and Senator, for your comments. Um, if you look on 2.19 or 2.17, I guess we don't really specify in, in that section um, what level of education to qualify for grants in there. And, and maybe that's something we have to tighten or loosen and look at. Um, so I'll, I'll have to look into that a little further. And uh, I, I did not know you needed it for undergraduate. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it, you know, so, but we'll, the way I read that section, you would you would qualify for undergraduate. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'd have to look at the, the requirements. And one last thing, Madam Chair. Senator Champion. And I would hope that a Senator, I know Senator Kent with the A26 would certainly look at this uh, as well. But what happens in the industry is even if that language says that, they think graduate level interns and, and those who should receive paid internships, and that's what they do. And so they don't do unpaid for undergraduates. And so that's something that I hope that you would consider, and I'm sure that Senator Kent would do it on the A26. And it's not because I'm bored by the conversation, but I have to do something. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. No problem. Thank you, Senator Champion. So that is something perhaps we can take a look at. Absolutely. Okay. M Madam Chair. Senator Kent. Uh, just a quick follow-up um, to Senator Champion's point. Yes, that is an excellent point um, and something our society really needs to begin to appreciate the need for uh, across uh, educational and uh, professional development sectors. Um, and uh, Senator Draham, again, I appreciate the efforts that are in your bill given the constraints that were provided to you when you wrote this bill. But the concerns that I have is that, um, we, again, we knew this was a problem, you know, years ago. Um, and now the needs are even greater, and so the response should be even greater. And um, Madam Chair, I'd like to request a roll call. Roll call requested, roll call granted. Um, I, I would like to say, in developing this this bill, there was a lot of attention on how much the sector can handle and how much you can roll out at one time without having money just sit on the bottom line or not being utilized. And even though this is um, this is a, our, our single subject bill passing a very important issue going to the floor by itself, 
this is just a stepping stone, a building block for what needs to continue ongoing. And Senator Derham, you mentioned that, but perhaps a, um, a separate um, topic or um, you know topic area. And I think that's a brilliant idea. So just remember that, members, that uh, it, it's you know we are building the foundation to more and efficient and more effective mental health delivery. That does include, I want to say, the substance um, uh, the SUD recovery system too. So um, with that, any other further comments? Senator Kent renews her motion on the A26 amendment. Roll call requested. Ms. Johnson? Chair Rosen? Chair votes no. Vice Chair Ingebrigtsen? Senator Marty? Aye. Senator Benson? No. Senator Champion? Senator Johnson? No. Senator Kent? Aye. Senator Kiffmeyer? No. Senator Lopez Franzen? Aye. Senator Pratt? No. Vice Chair Ingebrigtsen? And Senator Champion? There being three ayes and five noes, the A26 is not adopted. For their amendments. Okay. With that, Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam Chair. If we're done with amendments, I did want to circle back to something on um, Senator Benson's earlier A22 amendment. I had a question. Sure. Senator Benson, or Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, since we've been talking about um, the fiscal implications of everything that we've just offered, um, we passed that amendment rather quickly. Um, on lines 1, 2.25 and 1.26, um, is this accounted for in the tails moving forward? I'm sorry, Sarah, I, I didn't hear you. Um, on lines 1.25 and 1.26 of the A22 amendment, $10,232,000 in fiscal year 2026 and thereafter, is that accounted for in the tails? Do we have that? Um, Mr. Allen? So, Madam Chair and Senator Kent, the 10.232 is in fiscal 22. I'm sorry, rather, 26, and that's an additional increase above the amount that Mr. Albrecht has on the tracking. Under budget rules, um, now that the committee has adopted this, Mr. Albrecht will be required to put an asterisk and a footnote at the bottom of the spreadsheet to indicate that, in fact, there is an increased tail in fiscal 26 and beyond. Sir, okay. And, Madam Chair, um, are we comfortable that this is the right decision to uh, put this in there? Senator Benson? Senator Benson. Madam Chair, I apologize. Um, I was told this was a technical amendment and um, I am... Chair? I was not aware and I should have asked Mr. Albrecht if it would create an asterisk and it, my apologies to the committee for not calling that out. Um, my apologies. Thank you, Senator Kent. That is uh, a, well, Senator Benson, a good I catch. I told you it was a technical amendment. Senator Draham or, or Mr. Albrecht. I, I, I was just going to mention that he did mention it when he did go through the spreadsheet. Okay. That, and I wrote it on my notes that in 2026, and I think he used, uh, um, for the next biennium, it would be 20.5-ish. So that, that's what was discussed earlier when we were going through the spreadsheet. And Madam Chair, Sorry, Kent. If, um, if Mr. Albrecht, could you just bring us back to the line on the spreadsheet that this is linked to so that we can have that on the record and be clear? Mr. Albrecht. Uh, <clears throat> Madam Chair and Senator Kent, it is the amount on line four, the Adult Mental Health Initiative Grants. And Senator Kent, that's the money to the counties to keep them whole to, for the reform that DHS is wanting to implement. And, and just because I had trouble hearing Mr. Albrecht, I'm sorry, could you please repeat that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Albrecht. Uh, Madam Chair and Senator Kent, it's the amount on line four, the Adult Mental Health Initiative Grants. And just a little more explanation perhaps might help, or is there an order? The amount um, that would result from the uh, two hold 
the county's harmless is the $20.5 uh, million dollars or so. But because distributions to the counties are on a calendar year basis versus a fiscal year basis, and it begins in calendar year 2025, the state's budget is always only going to pick up half of that amount in its fiscal year. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification, Senator Kemp. I did, too, uh, put that on my, my spreadsheet also. So we probably should have, um, we kind of threw Senator Benson under the bus. Sorry. I, I, <laughs> Madam Chair, I, I've been under You've the been bus there before. before. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. Uh, so we are back to the original amended bill. Any further comments? No. All right. Senator Benson, would you please make the motion? Madam Chair, I move that... Senate file 3249 as amended be recommended to pass and placed on general orders on that motion madam chair Senator Could Benson. we roll call Senate uh, roll call requested roll call granted Ms. Johnson uh, Chair Rosen chair votes aye vice chair Ingebrigtsen Senator Marty aye Senator Benson aye Senator Champion? Senator Johnson? Aye. Senator Kent? No. Senator Kiffmeyer? Aye. Senator Lopez Franzen? Aye. Senator Pratt? Aye. There being seven ayes and one no, the motion prevails. Senate file 3249 is on general orders. Thank you so much, Senator Dreheim. Thank you. It's been you. a very good hearing. Appreciate everybody's feedback and uh, work on this. And uh, look forward to a strong vote on the Senate floor. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Albrecht. Members, um, our next hearing is Thursday, and we're going to have a presentation from MMB on the IIJA funds and that should be fascinating so um, thank you very much uh, with that the finance committee is adjourned <laughs>